glory, glory to the Lamb, glory, glory, glory to the Lamb for Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you, Lord, we lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb. You're the Lamb upon, upon the throne, upon the throne, and unto you, Lord, we lift our voice. You're the Lamb You're the Lamb. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Prophetic Bible study. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let's deal with something on here just real quickly. I'll be on here a couple minutes. Been meditating about some things. Let's go to uh, First Samuel. And when I meditated about some things, let's go to First Samuel chapter eight. Now, saints, how many of you all watched the last broadcast? You should really keep in tune with that broadcast that I did. Earlier today, you want to stay in tune with that broadcast because there's a lot of wisdom there, a lot of understanding there. As a deer panted for the water, so my soul long it had. You alone are my heart's desire and I long, yeah, to worship you. Let's go to verse, let's go to chapter 8, 1 Samuel chapter 8. Now look at this here, 1 Samuel chapter 8. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Verse 2, now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. Let's go to verse three. And his sons walked not in his ways. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. This is a prophet of God. This is a God prophet. Are you seeing something here? All right. 
verse three, and his sons walk not in his ways. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Glory carrying Samuel. They turned aside after lucre, which is considered filthy money, dirty money, meaning like you gain money from abomination in the sight of God. Is is the Lord hates the way that they are making this money. They're sinning against him. Their heart is perverse. And they took bribes and perverted judgment. Now, I want to prophesy. I could actually, um, I can get in trouble for saying this. But nevertheless, uh, uh, what it is, is the, is the end times. I saw, this is what I saw. I saw a payoff take place for cheating to go on in this election. Bribes. And who was involved in it? It was not one Republican. It was all Democrats. Now, I want to say this as well. I'm going to keep on reading because there's a lot of things that you that are spiritual will understand. Uh, verse 3. They took bribes in perverted judgment. They took bribes and perverted judgment. They took bribes and perverted judgment. Now, saints, perverted judgment. I was meditating. The spirit of God told me, I want you to look here. Because this is not the first time that it has ever happened. That means that even though there was laws because of, there's a payoff undercover, the laws are being broken to fit the payoff. Saints, let me just say this about our nation. Anytime you see that somebody says that an election is on a day and the day passes and then nobody is elected, you know something that went left. You know that something is, is crookedness going on. Because that's what happens when crookedness happens. Disorder happens and schedules get broken and it starts getting real weird. Saints, do you know that over the course of 4 a.m. to like 45 minutes later, President Trump is winning a state and they turned around and said, Joe Biden got 100% of the votes that we said that we needed to count. 100%. Say, so you know what 100% is? That means that they're trying to say within these mysterious votes that they told everybody to go to sleep on and when you wake up, you'll find out... Oh, a hundred percent of the votes went to Joe Biden. Out of nowhere. One hundred percent. These lying devils. Oh, they're going to have a hot hell. They're going to have a hot hell. But. Bribes. Filthy lucre. Perverted judgment.
The reason why you're seeing all these homosexuals and transgenders and lesbians starting to take the Senate and starting to take different congressmen authoritative positions because it's just a setup for the one world government. It has to be the man of lawlessness surrounded by lawlessness. You want to know why is it all because because you got to understand a homosexual person is a lawless person. You know that they're a lawless person because the law for how God created you to operate. They're saying no. Then, you know, a transgender person is extremely lawless because not only are they saying no, but they say I'm going to cut my part off so that you can't convince me that I'm wrong. When you start seeing those type of people get into authoritative positions. Now, saints, what goes on in those moments? It's signs to let you know that this is the preparation for. Now, I said that they took lucre and took bribes and perverted justice. Saints, if you told me that you have a baby shower on the third and I come to the baby shower and you have me waiting outside until about 1 a.m. and you don't tell me nothing. And then 7 a.m. come. You don't tell me nothing. Something fishy going on. Either your boyfriend done beat you in the eyes and you don't want to come out because you don't want me to see that you're in an abusive relationship. Some, something has taken place. Either you done, you done, you done, you, you, your baby got abducted and you don't want to tell me that your baby got abducted and you, you still trying to find if somebody have located your baby. Something has happened. If you tell me that that baby shower is on the third and I'm out there on the third and I'm out there waiting and I'm not hearing from you and you don't got no deficit and then well, something fishy is happening. Something fishy. And then saints, here's the wild thing. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. They said that a hundred percent of the votes. The hundred percent came. And they all was for Joe Biden. One hundred percent. If that's not the most ludicrous. You watch this here. Imagine somebody winning. Imagine Michael Jordan playing, right? And he's winning, right? And you say, well, I don't know if he's winning. Let me just go check some of uh, Steve Kerr's uh, to see if he got a little vote, you know. And then you come back and say, well, none of them was, none of, them was uh, of Michael Jordan at all. Not one. And you wait until everybody is sort of called speak, sleeping to just give a bop. Now, saints, I had a joke in my head, but I know that this is legit. I had a joke in my head. Bots. Bot votes. Bot votes. You know what a bot is? Huh? Bot votes. <laughs> bot votes that you can't trace. You don't know where is that. It's just bot votes. And saints, pit 
thing just at numbers because it's not making no sense. But why does things like this happen? Because of bribes, perverted justice, perverted judgment underneath the cloth. Remember what I told you? The mark of the beast will rise up out of the Democratic Party. Remember what I told you? It will rise up out of the Democratic Party. If you was following me earlier this year when I said, I said Jezebel, her prophecy will not be fulfilled. I said what she's doing with the impeachment will not be fulfilled. And even though they had that, it got overturned. Why? Because that's what goes on underneath that Democratic Party. They carry the assignments of Satan. That's why you see, look at most of the people that's coming forth that are homosexuals and lesbians and they're trying to take, most of them are Democrats, if not all. Because the, the Democrat Party is anti-God. They're anti-Jesus. They're anti-Christ. Do you know what anti mean? It means against. It means that I will not have anything to do with agreeing with anything that Jesus says. So, so God, God don't like the killing of babies. Democrats say, no, you have a right to kill your baby. God doesn't like Two men and two women together. Democrat Party says, no, you have a right to be married. You have a right to enjoy both each other. Everything that God says is abominable. Now, saints, I want to catch you. I, I, I want you to hear this too. There's coming a day. I know that you probably think about just California and stuff like that. But um, there's coming a day. Where America will be on fire. Now we won't be here in those days. We won't be here in those days. But God is not going to drown. Like he did Noah. Remember the second time is going to be fire. And always remember. Why did God always use fire? He used fire. To burn up the captain in his 50. Which was coming against Elijah. Why? Because they were prophets of Baal, satanic prophets. Then he sent fire. Why? Because they was homosexuals and lesbians. And look at what's happening in our jurisdiction system. Homosexuals and lesbians. Now, mind you. God. He did something to get that Amy. In, into that wicked system. And they actually tried to uproot her out of there. But Amy. She about the only one in there. That God's hand is on. And she a woman too. And God sent her right up there in, in a wicked, a wicked place. And he with her. She did to shift some things. She did to shift some things. But saints, did you catch that revelation of fire? I said, remember, he sent fire. You know why? Because number one, he sent fire because the captain is 50, prophets of Baal, the attack against the prophet. The attack against the gospel. The attack against. Here's what a lot of people that are religious don't understand. Democratic people. They hate the Bible. The Democratic Party hates the Bible. For those men and women in this nation that have actual buildings and churches and they expect to go back to their churches 
and carry on churches underneath Democratic leadership, they're going to find out that what they want is not what they want. They're going to find out. They're going to find out. Because saints, the Democratic people are the birthing pains of the one world government. Now, since I'm saying all these things to you, but I also want to bring some comfort and some clarity so that you can understand it. What, what I'm saying right now can kind of seem a little terrifying, but it's not terrifying. As you can see, I'm cooling. So don't just run with these words and get an anxiety attack because I'm just dealing with like the dirt, the dirty stuff. But then I'm going to tell you our schedule. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 8, I find that very significant that is in chapter 8. I find that very significant. Let's go to verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah. In verse 5, he said unto him, Behold, Thou art old, and thy sons walk not in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel. Remember this text right here. The thing displeased Samuel. Remember that. But the thing displeased Samuel. Always remember, when a prophet is displeased, something is Terribly wrong. As a matter of fact, God, he uses the prophet as a cheat sheet so that you can know his emotions, where he stands, what's happening to him. He, you got to understand, God made a twin translator of his emotions in the prophet. So they're telling him basically let us have a king. Let us have a president over us. Listen, verse six. But the thing displeased Samuel. Because Samuel knows that this is not God's will. Samuel is displeased because he knows that this is not what God wants. But the people say, let us have this still. Now let's go here. Verse six. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Okay. Samuel goes into prayer. Are you catching this? So Samuel knows. That this is not God's will. So here's what Samuel does. Samuel goes into prayer. What do you think Samuel is doing? Samuel is trying to pray against it. What is Samuel attempting to do? Pray against something he knows is not God's will. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let's go here. Let's go to verse 6. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Watch this. In verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me. That I should not reign over them that I should not reign over them. Okay. Let's go to verse eight. According to all the works which they have done since, which they have done since the day of Egypt, brought them out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods. Now I want to shock you with this. 
I'm going to shock you with this. And some of you all, you never heard this like this before. But guess what? America is the modern day Egypt. And see, if you look at opportunities and things like that, you'll probably say, no, it's freer than the other lands. No, 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 no. People that come here actually become more bound because of the opportunities and the accessibility and the power, the wealth, the prosperity that's here. It's the modern day Egypt. Why do you think Instagram and Facebook and all these different things, these are things that have become bondages? People can't even pray no more because they always on Facebook. They can't fast. They can't seek God. They're too busy because they have to be on Instagram. You imagine there are some people that are actually called by God that have neglected their calling because they're on social media. There are people that can't raise their children because they're on social media. There are people that can't love their husband or love their wives because they're on social media. There are children that can't even get to know their parents and love on their parents and respect their parents because they're on social media. This land of America has become Egypt. And the thing about it was God brought this land into a wealthy place. But look at what this land has done to God. Some of you are not going to believe me if I say this, but on Thursday, I had a visitation from several angels. I told you that I was having a visitation from angels. One of the angels that came to me, I, and I've held this inside of me. I haven't told a single soul. One of the angels that came to me was Kim Clements. And I'm going to tell you what he said. I'm going to tell you exactly what he said. He sung a song to me. Kim Clements didn't have a conversation with me. He just sung a song. And here's the song that he kept singing to me. And I sung it probably like twice or three times after I hear him sing it to me. He said, this one he kept singing. He said, there's gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire. And it's me. There's gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire. Kim Clements, the gold in the fire, and it's me. And he said, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire, and it's me. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's gold in the fire, and it's me. Kim Clements didn't say nothing else to me. He departed, according to the natural. That was in alignment with what all the other angels was there, but he showed up and sung that song to me. He didn't say nothing else. He didn't say nothing else. But I understood telepathically what he was saying. Number one, fire means trial. Fire means trial. That's why I think in the book of Peter it says... Um, don't be troubled by the fiery trials which is to test you. 
But look, a week later, look what's happening. Trial. Trial. And it's a fiery trial. You know why? Because it's light against darkness, it's good against evil. But here's the beautiful thing about these times. Jesus, Jesus never loses. Jesus never loses. Some of you are, you're going to have to learn over time. If you look at your life, you have had many battles, but look at you today. He never loses. Jesus never loses. You have had things happen to you. You got kicked out of houses. You probably battled sickness. You have been betrayed. You have people walk out on your life. All type of stuff that happened to you. You have cars repossessed. Stuff happened to you. But look at you today. Jesus never loses. Jesus never loses. But there's gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire. It's gold in the fire, and it's me, yeah. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's gold in the fire, and it's me, yeah. There's gold in the fire. There's God in the fire. There's God in the fire. And it's me, yeah. Oh, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's gold in the fire, and it's me, yeah. You know, if um, some of you all followed me, right? Remember, I had prophesied Kim Clements' death. Some of you all got to remember. You remember 2016? 2016? Two thousand and sixteen. I think it was two thousand sixteen. Was it two thousand sixteen? Yeah, that was two thousand sixteen. I think. No, that was two thousand and fifteen. One of those years, I prophesied Kim Clement's death. And remember, when everybody was saying he gonna live, and, and they were praying, I said, I see his spirit leave his body. And Kim Clements probably died. They, they pronounced him dead like the next day or something. If I was to tell you something, it will mess you up in the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you. Where do you think President Trump came out of? His spiritual origin is Kim Clements. There's gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire. And it's me, yeah. Oh, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me say, let me say this to you. President Trump is very prophetic. And he can see in the spirit only because God has caused him to see. Because God knew that he was going to use him. He knows what's happening spiritually concerning this. And then there's a lot of people like Paula White, Jensen and Franklin, Franklin Graham, James Robinson, um, 
all these different people that are stand, standing alongside of him. So it's like he has a company of prophets around him. You see what I'm saying? So he knows the spiritual thing that's going on here. You notice who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? The thief. Why do you think they use the words steal the election? I don't know if you remember earlier I said that Democrats are really demon rats, demon crats. That word demo is really demon. That's, that's where this mark will rise up from. But you're seeing these things happen. Some of these things they're gradually starting to line up with what the Lord said will happen. How that mark of the beast will happen. And saints, if you if you look at how everybody was trying to demand you to get coronavirus tests, they was trying to demand you to stay in the house. They was trying to demand you not to leave. They was trying to demand you to wear masks. They was trying to demand you all these different type of things. Because that's how the system of the Antichrist is. That's how it operates. It operates through slow manipulation. Look at the phones now, this 5G, this 5G, this 5G, the truth of the matter is some of the people that they were saying was dying from coronavirus, they was dying from 5G. I know this as a prophet because the, the thing that they got that type of radiation in the airways people they're not supposed to be in hell in that when they were saying stay inside the house stay inside the house why? Because they try to experiment and they know it's dangerous. Now look at your phones. They got 5G, right? Got 5G on the phone. The reason why I got 5G on the phone, this is abnormal. But see, these type of things, these things happen undercover. You see what I'm saying? These things, not stuff that's like, you got to be a seer to see this. Or you got to hear a seer. I'm not the only seer that can see this, by the way. But you got to be a seer to know these secret things. Saints, injustice cannot go on in the law without bribes. How do you think that Hillary Clinton got off when President Trump was exposing her that all type of stuff, the same thing with this election. How do you think that Hillary got off and got no, jo j no, no time at all and all the things were there? Money. Saints, how do you think that Biden got off of the scam, the, the illegal stuff that they did? Not only to children, but to nations. And the secret money that they laundered underneath the table. How do you think that they got off money? What you're seeing right now in this land, in this nation is bribes, filthy lucre, and perverse judgment.
and, and saints, you always know when God reveals something, there is a judgment. And saints, I'm going to tell you like this right here. Me as a prophet of God, I know this for, sh for sure and for truth. The prophet always cries out and talks about what's happening. It looks like Satan rise over the head all the time. Because remember, Zacharias prophesied he got killed. His blood was on the altar. And then Jesus came back and, and, and um, uh, it was prophesied how there will be an avenging of the blood of the prophets. The blood of Zacharias. There'll be an avenging. There'll be a judgment. There'll be a justice. God moving his own timing. And we love that about the father. We love that about the father. As a prophet, I love the timing of God. It is perfect to me. We not anxious. We not rushing the father to do nothing. He know what he doing and we respect him. We respect the great God, Jehovah. You never get so bombarded by the revelation that God gives you of the evil and the corruption that's happening. Because when he giving you that, it's to let you build credibility. The first thing that we often may do according to just natural reasoning, when God reveals something, well, God, what you going to do about it? No, no, no. Before he told you, he already got something that he going to do about it. He just don't do nothing. <laughs> you, you understand? He just don't do nothing unless he reveals it to the servant, his prophet. No, no, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a clap back. He don't do nothing unless he reveals it. Remember. God is submitted to me. I'm submitted to God. So saints, I'm just sharing with you some, some confidential stuff here. But we praise God and blessed be the name of the Lord. Because remember, God acknowledges me in all his ways. He just let me know what's going on. Never get anxious. Because Jesus always gets the, laugh, la the last laugh. I learned that long time ago. Longer than you'll ever know. Over a decade ago, I, got, I learned that. Over a decade. The father always gets the last laugh. Always. And saints, you got to understand, he's the everlasting God. He does not faint. He does not grow weary. So, so according to your time, you may look at it and like, Lord, you need to come through right now. Please, Jesus. Ah! You may be looking at that in your natural mind. But listen, eternal minds think alike. You caught that? Eternal minds. Eternal minds. Did you catch that? We think alike. You don't go to battles for the quickness of it. You go to battles with the longevity in mind. The Bible said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, that was a commandment because the Lord, even if something looks like it goes left, he know what he doing. And that's why I love everything that the father lets happen in my life, in my path, because whatever he wants to happen. It's going to happen as long as you. 
Let not your heart be troubled. Since I said something powerful, I said, Elijah, Moses, Jesus, they all came underneath wicked government. Herod was their president. That's why Herod sent out a thing to try to find Jesus. And the angel has to tell Joseph, go hide the baby. Y'all go over there to Egypt or something. You may look at it in a natural way. Well, why God just don't kill Herod? Why God just don't do this? No, no, no. It's never why God just don't do this. No, no, no. We not disrespectful. We, we not worried about that. We don't talk like that. You know what we do? Blessed be the name of the Lord. What's your response? Always. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We praise you. We glorify you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise to the highest. Praise to the most high God all the time. You don't look at it like how everybody look at stuff. And you don't let yourself get into the flesh of anything that happens in this life. You always lean towards the spirit. And what's the spiritual way that I deal with this? Saints, um, I've had uh, many cases even in my ministry, right, when people get reports. And the reports look like they were going downhill. And I would tell the people in my ministry, let me tell you something. Stick to this word that I gave you. Don't worry about symptoms. Don't worry about anything. I often talk about there was three people in my ministry that had uh, cancer. There was two people that had AIDS. You have to stick with God, no matter what. The Spirit was talking to me about how trust, trust is something that you develop over seeing satanic warfare go on. Do you know that you can't even trust God until satanic warfare goes on in your life? Because what, what are you trusting God for? You're trusting God because there's other reports, there's other oppositions, and it looks like Satan is reigning. Saints, why do you think God gets so much delight in people that have faith? Because the whole earth is saturated with the opportunity not to have faith. Why do you think that, that God gets so much pleasure in you having trust? Because the whole earth is surrounded by the opportunity to not trust God. Let me read this here. Let's go to verse 9. Now this is a parable. But he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And now therefore hearken unto their voice. How be it, yet protest solemnly unto them. And show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Look at verse 10. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked him for a king. And asked him for a president, a ruler. Now Samuel is their prophet, but they're asking Samuel. Now let's go to verse 11. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. 
He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. Look at verse 12. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties. That sounds familiar, captain in his fifties. That sounds familiar. And will set them. Could that happen in Elijah's day? Captain is 50. Will set them to ear his ground and reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. Let's go to verse 16. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and pit them to his work. I don't know if some of you are catching this. It's talking about a thief, a lawless. Wow. I had never saw this like this. How many of y'all are like seeing something here? And, and I just want you to think strong on this and just meditate on these things that I'm saying. What God is saying Samuel, tell the people that what they want, do they know what they are asking for? Because this person is going to be a thief. Is going to be a person that's lawless. It's going to be a person that shall oppress. Now, saints, this is wild to me. But in the deep prophetic, I want you to catch this. Here's what I want you to see. God had already knew who Saul was going to be. And I, I saints, look at this here. So when God told Samuel to go anoint Saul, God still knew who Saul was. Because look, he just prophesied about all the wrong stuff he was going to do. Wow. This crazy. He still prophesied all the wrong stuff that he was going to do. He said that he going to take your, your, your stuff. He going to take and said that you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you have chosen. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Saints, I look at this nation that we're in. There, there is a margin of people like they don't want anything that God wants in this land concerning leadership. And saints, what I'm showing you here is that what God always does when people cry out, I don't want I don't want your way, Lord, not in the. God has a very crafty way of saying, Samuel, go. Now, look at this here. 
Let's go to verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, now nah, we will have our king over us. After Samuel just told them, do you know that this will be a wicked man? Do you know that this will be a man of evil? Do you know that this will be a man that will oppress you? Do you know that this will be a man that will move into satanic? Do you know that this will be a man that will bring great disaster and great sorrow? They said, no, nah, we don't receive that. Give us what we want. Which is what the cry of America is. This is the cry of America. Saints, this is the cry of people that hold Bibles and preach to their congregations. This is their cry. No, we don't want that. We just want our way. Come on. Give us what we want. Give us what we want. Give us what we want. Let's go to verse 20. Let's go to verse 21. Now look at verse 21. You know the number 21. And Samuel heard all the words of the people. And he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And Samuel heard all the words of the people. And he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. Look at verse 22. And the Lord said, hearken unto their voice. And make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, go ye every man unto his city. A prophetic church mm, 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 mm. that text that I just read read to you is deeper than you know is deeper than you know. Is deeper than you know. Samuel, whose words never fall to the ground. God tell him, no, no, no. Don't try to stop them. Let them have. Spiritually, you know what this often goes for? It goes for when you see transgenders. You see people being elected into positions and these are God's enemies. Are you catching this? Think about what I'm saying here. These are God's enemies and they're being elected to high positions. This is how you look at it. This is how you look at stuff when you see people that are obviously God's enemies infiltrating the land. The revelation is that there come a time where people want and want and want and want and want. And God say, even to the prophetic, 
Let them have. Let them have. Don't even try to turn it around in the spirit. Let them have. Because there's certain things in certain sectors that's going to happen in these end times and we're already seeing it take place right now. Saints, it started off this year when we saw that democratic cities were letting people throw and loot and go inside of places and take all type of stuff and just do it and burn up people's businesses. And we saw all that stuff going on. We was already seeing the lawlessness. Saints, the truth of the matter is if it wasn't for President Trump being in office, that stuff was going to get out of hand. It was going to go into all type of different levels of outrage, but it was stopped. It was getting there. It was getting there. It was getting there. I say all these things. And I say unto you to be at peace in these perilous times that we're in. Reason why God give you a prophet because he know that the time will come where evil will try to overtake. Evil will try to dominate. In every generation, there was always a different form of Satanic setup. For Moses, it was Pharaoh. For Elijah, it was Ahab and Jezebel. And for Jesus, it was Herod. It was the Pharisees. It was the chief priests. It was those that was in religious uh, order. But Jesus always wins. Jesus always wins. And we praise God. I want to share that with you before I got into, into uh, this. Because the thing about it was um, that was something that I, I wanted to share. I didn't share that thing about Kim Clements. I held it within me. I wanted to know if I was even supposed to voice that to anybody. And that's a personal thing. But I understand I understand. Kim Clemens didn't say nothing to me. He just sung that song. In the spirit realm right now. Yes, there's a war going on. Yes, there's a war going on. I told you about how I saw angels and demons fighting against each other. Because there's a war going on. But I want to say this to those of you all. That you. Will see victory. No matter what. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what man say. You're going to see. God reign supreme. No matter what. It don't matter. What they declare. It don't matter. Who declares what you're going to see the Lord Jesus high and lifted up in what he wants to do. He going to have his way. It might take a while. It might take a while, but he going to have his way. Doggone it. He going to have his way. It, it, let me tell you something. I don't care if the world declare what, who declare what, the Senate declare what. The government declare what? I don't care. Jesus going to have his way. He going to have his way. Now let's go to Mark chapter 10. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Let's go to verse 15. 
For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Oh my gosh. Saints, now this is scary right here. You know why this is scary? Because it's a simple text. But look what it says right here. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as. So, so, so there, there's, there's somebody that you have to look at and imitate before you can receive the kingdom. So a little child is actually your example to how to receive what God is teaching you. When you see that word as, it's dealing with a model. It's dealing with what you should imitate. This is the, the, the example. Look what it says. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. So little children, you know what they do? You could teach a child anything and they'll learn it. Saying something else that the Lord had uh, done was when I had the visitation with the angels. One of the angels told me that I could speak to my daughter Zendaya. And I could get her off mentally of, you know, that crutch. So I touched my daughter. Boom. Power of God hit her. Put my hand on her head. I reversed her brain from going a direction to go to the direction I wanted to go. And she's been free ever since. Not one relapse. It's almost like the memory of it is gone. But I did all of that just by spoken decree, releasing the power of God, transferring the deliverance, and shifting it. And Zendaya go to sleep, no problem, no nothing. Just acting normal. The other day I was laughing because I had a, I had a, <laughs> I had Zendaya in my back seat. She was in the back to. I said, blessed be God. This. Now you get to, you get to just free will it. You just get to free will it. <laughs> and saying what's, what be so funny when the, when the little babies, when they, when they laying down and their cheeks all fat. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all ain't right. You don't went to the the uh, grocery store. You don't went to Target. Got some grapes. You see your great grandpa sleeping up there. You up there throwing a the grape up there. Catch it! Catch it! Catch it! You throwing it up there. You ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> he done, he done, he done caught the grape in his mouth, and he almost choked. <coughs> what? Oh, this is good right here. Mm. What? What just? I think God just gave me some grapes. This, this, the God just gave me some grapes, and you over there laughing. You not right. And see, you can't even trust women because when they trick you, they don't even want to reveal that they tricked you. Daggone shame. They're up there beholding the secret all the way to their funeral service. He up there think an angel gave him some sweet fruit. He think the angel gave him some sweet fruit. It says that you got to receive the kingdom as a little child. He shall not enter therein. So saints, I want you to catch this. Now watch verse 16. 
And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. Wow. Saints, it, this is powerful to me because as I'm reading this, that's why I did to Zendaya as well. You know? So I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow. Because in that generation, look at Mark chapter 10, verse 13. It said, they brought young children to Jesus that he should touch them. Wow. Now, here's what you want to catch. When Jesus wanted to touch the children, they didn't reject his touch. So when the Bible says that King Jesus said, if you don't receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you will not enter. Here's what the Bible's saying. If you don't let me make a point of contact with you and touch you, if I can't touch you, you can't receive the kingdom because the children are letting me touch them. They're not resisting my touch. Well, how do you resist the touch of Jesus? Because of distractions? Distractions make you miss the touch of Jesus. Distractions, all those different things from distractions to 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 idols to having things that take up more of your time, things that make you drift from seeking God, things that override you speaking in tongues, things that make you not be able to praise God. Things that make you not fascinated to learn. But look what he says. That's why he says that you cannot receive the kingdom of, unless you receive it as a little child. Because he's saying little children, they let me, they let me touch them. They let me, they let me do a work in their life. They let me bring them to the next level. Well, King Jesus is saying that they allow me to do what I want to do with them. So that's the way that you operate in the kingdom. Every department of your life has to be open and available to King Jesus. I say, so let's go here. Let's go here. Now, King Jesus is dealing with the kingdom right here. In Mark chapter 12, verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. Now, saints, I want to give you a revelation that you never heard before. He sat over against the treasury. Why is he sitting down and not standing up? Because this is a divine position that King Jesus carries. He's sitting. He's seated. And look, look where he chose to seat himself. He chose to seat himself where? He chose to seat himself at the treasury. So the place where he is sitting down is the treasury. Why does he choose this position? Because he's Jehovah Jireh. He's a place where you find all the true treasures, the treasures that come from heaven. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. Now look at this. I want to give you another revelation. It says that he sat over Against. Now these cardinal points, these directions are important. It says that he sat over. Meaning that his position is even over this financial place. He's in charge. And then he also got greater dimensions, greater heights to this. And then watch this, against. Why does he sit against the treasury? Why? Because this is the place where God challenges you. This is the place 
where God faces you face to face and gives you an opportunity to actually be his friend, to be in agreement with him. But he got to challenge you. He got to contest you to see if you're on this kingdom of God or you're in the kingdom of the world. Isn't this glorious? How many of y'all understanding this, this great revelation here? Isn't this mighty? Isn't this amazing? Isn't this strong? Isn't this heavy? Isn't this deep? You will not catch this in Prophet Joshua Holmes. <laughs> Look what it says. And Jesus sat over, over, sat, sat over and against. These are three different directions. Sat, meaning that this it's a position over, meaning that King Jesus is dominating over it, but he's also carrying other realms of this same place. So, so he, he's over the treasury, but there, there's treasures that are over in other realms. That's why you can say somebody paid me over what I needed. That means that your need was a realm, but they went over the realm that you needed. My God. So that word over, it say they paid me over than what I needed. So they stepped into another realm that you wasn't even in. They, they exposed a realm that you didn't even need. And that's why you had over what you needed. Jesus. <laughs> Saints, if you read the Bible with me, look how look how much you get. Look how much you get. And we, we, we didn't even read the whole paragraph. We just read like a couple, couple of phrases. And look, look how much you get. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. Why? Because he's sitting against the treasury because God always opposes you with the seed. That's why when people pass the seed test, that's why the Lord know that he can be one with you. He can pour out his glory. He can give you wealth. He can give you riches. He could increase you. You know why? Because if he could go against you, because when he goes against the treasury, that means that Jesus is going against what you think is your money. He, he going against you with seed instructions. He going head up with you. He wrestling with you. He fighting against you with the seed. Saints, that's why if God ever tell you to do something financially, you'll feel like him fighting you. You'll feel like a wrestle in the spirit. If the Lord ever talks to you about a financial instruction, you'll feel a wrestling going on in the spirit. Why? Because he always sits over against the treasury. The place where sowing is going on, he sits against it because this is where he's going to challenge you. This is where he's going to test your trust, test your faith, test whether you're ready to go to the next level of life. And that's why when you yield to him being against the treasury, that's why he take you over so that you could sit down. My God. And that's why there remaineth the rest. Because if you let him show you. Huh? If you let him show you. How to be victorious. While he's sitting against. While he's against the treasury. Then he could bring you into the realm of over. That means he's going to expose to you the hidden riches of secret places. Isaiah 45 verse 3. And then sat. You're going to be in a position. So saints, as you look, I just took that text in reverse. Jesus sat over. Well, guess what? Jesus sat over against. I just showed you the three realms. Sat over and against are three different realms. My God. Jesus. Ain't this hot, man? 
sat over and against. So you got to pass. So he comes to you as sat over and against. But then you're going to have to win when he comes to you by winning against so that you can get to over so that you can be established as sat. So for Jesus is sat over against, for you is against, over and sat. For Jesus is sat over against, for you is against, over and sat. Because when he goes against you in that subject of the treasury, if you pass the test, guess what's going to take place? Now you're going to step into what? Going over. That's why your paycheck go over. That's why your provision go over. That's why your mindset go over. That's why your angels go over. That's why your justice goes over. Your joy goes over. Your peace goes over. Your love levels go over. That's why your protection goes over. That's why your deliverances go over. That's why your peace of mind. That's why your health in your body goes over. Because you're in the over realm. Then you step into sat. That means that you're not just... When you over, you enter in realms. But when you sat, that means that you're established in wealth. You established in prosperity. Oh, Jesus. That, man, oh, that, that feel good, boy. That feel good, boy. That feel good, boy. When you establish, ah! when you established in increase, you're not just over, you're not just tasting of the different realms, but now you sat, you established. I received some sat money. Oh my God. Oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, who, 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 who gonna write me on here and say sat money, sat money, sat money, sat money. That money that's in sat, that's established money. That's the money that say that a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children, children. That's that sat money. S-A-T. A-S-A-P. S-A-T, A-S-A-P. <laughs> Watch this. So Jesus sat over against the treasury. Mark chapter 12, 41. And the Bible say, and beheld. Now saints, the word beheld is important because look what it say. Beheld. That means that King Jesus is operating in a position. Right? Be. So, so he's operating as a financial coach. Saints, says, I'm showing you something, man. I, I got the anointed on me. I'm trying to get this to you. Oh, Jesus. It says that he be held. It's a compound word. Be means that he's operating from a position. There's a certain position that he's operating in right now. He be held. And now from the position, he's holding something with that position. You know how somebody say, I got a bone to pick with you. That means that they're holding a bone and they're going to pick it with you. That means that I'm going to confront you. So he be held. He, he's holding something. What is he holding? Observation. What is he holding? Righteousness. Righteousness means he know how he wants you to sow. Meaning he know what he wants you to sow. And see, he be, because this is his position, he a financial coach. He a financial trainer. He a seed prophet. Did you catch that? He a seed prophet. Seed prophet. He prophetically know who's sowing out of their spirit man, not out their flesh. Look what, look what it says here. Saints. This is King Jesus. So imagine God knowing you so incorrect. King Jesus knowing you so incorrect. Because look, he's, he, he's, 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 he's operating in his position B. And then he, he's holding on to something. Hell. He beheld how the people cast money. Now watch this. He beheld how the people cast money. How? 
Now this how matters. It, because how is not dealing with amount. How is dealing with what is driving this amount? Are you sowing this amount because that this is what you want to be safe with? Are you sowing this amount because you've been driven by your restriction? Have, have you, are you sowing this amount because you believe that this is all the money that's going to come to you? Saints, this hot. It says that Jesus is beholding how the people cast money into the treasury. The fact that he said how, now hereby you understand why I said that he loved a cheerful giver and it, it talked about how sowing, not grudgingly or ne of necessity. Because when you sow like that, you can't give the Lord what he actually wants because those, those attitudes, those mentalities of fear and grudges and needs, when you sow like that, you automatically betray the prophetic anointing to sow. Wow, Jesus. Uh, that's why the Lord sends the prophet to even teach you about sowing and become a sower for you because the prophet actually got to transfer a prophetic anointing to you to sow. You don't know how to sow. The prophet got to give you sowing power. It's a prophetic sowing glory. See, King Jesus knows how they're supposed to really be sowing because he the prophet that they're supposed to be sowing into. Saints, who do you think that this woman with the two mites is? She a woman that was sowing into Jesus in heaven. She came out of King Jesus as a sower. So guess what? King Jesus just relocated her in the earth. And she doing the same thing that she was doing in heaven. So what you think going to happen? King Jesus going to bring heaven down on her. See, that's what the hundredfold is really about. You relocating how you were sowing everything in heaven. So, so all King Jesus did is create a system of saying, I'll reposition you of how you was in your past life. When you was just spirit. When you didn't have a soul. Your soul, when I say you didn't have a soul, well, I mean that you didn't have a body. You didn't have an earthly body. Because see, even when he made him on the dust of the ground, he said that he became a living soul. So, so really the soul and the body often is connected together and you just don't know it. That's why your soul leads to your body. It has to learn to lean to your spirit. Watch this. And many... That were rich, cast in much. But see, what matters to the Lord most is your heart. Because you can so much on the outside and so little on the inside. You know how? Because it might be large money leaving your hand. But it's small faith, expectation, respect for that seed leaving your heart. How many of y'all feel that peace anointing too? I see you on there. How many? How many y'all? How many y'all feel that same peace anointing too? How many y'all feel feel a, a, a super, supernatural atmosphere switch? Huh? Cause see, this King Jesus talking to you from our system. This this our system. Our system don't it don't fluctuate. You see what I'm saying? 
They don't fluctuate. It don't go to the left or to the right. Our system don't fluctuate. Our system is sure. Say sometimes it's okay for you to be knowledgeable about what happens on in the earth, but then sometimes it's not really all that good. You see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that still ain't my system. You see what I'm saying? My system is sure. My system don't change. I rule, I reign. In him, I live, I move, I have my being. It don't matter who, 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 who. Listen, you can pick Wu-Tang Clan, ain't nothing to mess with. I'm still going to be ruling and reigning. Saints, remember when Barack Obama was in office? <laughs> Do you know that Prophet Joshua Holmes was still up in here talking to talk? Huh? How many of y'all remember that? Remember when Bar Barack was saying... Obama, huh? I was still talking that talk. So what I'm saying is, it's okay for you to get knowledge of stuff, but sometimes you got to moderate. Because you got, you got, you got, you, your, your root system, your strength system is not there. That's a weaker system. That's a beggarly element. Oh, Jesus. See, but this, 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 what we carry in is eternal grace. This, what we carry in is eternal glory. This, this eternal power. Eternal power. This is this eternal fire. Fire of God, favor of God, grace of God, angels of God. This is eternal. This world will pass away. This world won't. The world that I'm operating in will never die. The world I'm operating in will never cease. The world I'm operating in will never be broke. Money! Come it to me now. The world I'm in will never be sick. The world I'm in will never live in pain. The world I'm in is wholeness, is power, is grace, is glory, is fire, is favor, is wisdom, is anointing. A great God. Great God. Strong and mighty in battle. This kingdom has no end. Nothing can stop him. Nothing can stop him. He's God. All power been given unto me in heaven and on earth. I have the power. All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, this kingdom, it don't never stop. It don't matter what happened. It don't matter what demonic powers rise up. It don't matter what evil spirits try to talk. It don't matter what going on in the world government. Jesus is on the throne. The power of God is still going to move in this earth. It don't matter what happens. It don't matter who there, who where. Jesus still going to be Lord. It don't matter if the evil spirits try to run the people of God out of this nation. It don't matter what takes place in the government. The church shall prevail. It doesn't matter.
Take on the whole arm of God. We're not worried about the serpent and the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. Because guess what? You got the power over all demons. Look what it say right here. And it said, there came a certain poor widow. And she threw in two mites. Now look at this. He called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, I want you to see this. Her seed made King Jesus talk. See, you want to unlock the gossip in Jesus. Oh, Lord. Cut, cut. When Jesus get into his gossip stages, that means that favor about to hit your life like never before. You want to unlock the gossip in Jesus. So, sowing seeds that unlock the gossip in Jesus. Wow. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you catch what I just said? I said sowing seeds that unlock the gossip in Jesus. You want to sow seeds that make Jesus can't keep his mouth shut. He got to tell some daggone about it. And saints, who you think he telling? The angels? Who you think he telling? The people on earth? Who you think he telling? Somebody that can bless you? Who he telling you? The people that's a part of, of your it shall be given equation? Wow. Did you just catch what I just said? The people that's a part of your it shall be given equation. It shall be given equation. That's powerful. Sowing seeds that unlock the gossip in Jesus. Because the gossip of Jesus produces your favor on earth. Oh, that's hot, man. Oh, that's hot, man. Oh, that's hot, man. Oh, that's hot now. That's a hot boy. I said, that's a hot boy. I said, that's a hot boy. That's a hot boy. I said, the gossip in Jesus produces your favor on earth. Because as long as your seed making him talk, the word always becomes flesh. Oh, Jesus. So if King Jesus is talking, what he's talking about is going to become flesh. You're going to see it in the flesh. Your flesh is going to partake of the manifestation that comes from heaven. And you are going to visibly know that it has occurred. Are you catching this? The word is going to be made flesh. And it's going to dwell among you. And you're going to behold his glory. Glory never comes without gold. Glory never comes without large money. That's why when the, when the word became flesh and dwelt among us, that's why the kings had to come and give King Jesus gold, even though he was a baby. Because the, the glory never comes without gold. Because he was the word made flesh, and that glory, you beheld it, it had supernatural money in it. Saints, sowing to unlock the gossip in Jesus. When she sowed, it says, Verily I say unto you, that this, look, he had to go gossip to his disciples. Saints, these people were sowing, and King Jesus didn't say nothing about them. They were sowing and Jesus didn't even talk one word. His mouth didn't move. But when she sows, he said, hey, y'all, I, I, I got something. I want, I want gossip. I want gossip. I want to talk some stuff here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to say something to you. I know I didn't say nothing all this time because I've been chilling. Ain't nothing moving me. But now I'm moved. I want to say something to you. And he said, look, Peter, listen, John. Listen, James. Look at, look at it. Look at, look at it. Look at, look at, look at over here. Look at over here. 
Look over here. Look at that one, one golden girl right here. This a golden girl right here. This a golden girl. You know how I know she a golden girl? I don't mean that she old. It don't mean that she 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 don't got the moves like Jagger. This a golden girl because she know how to take gold. And not only did she sow it, she became it. See, the sower doesn't just sow gold. The sower becomes gold. Some of y'all don't understand that you are a golden girl. <laughs> so thank you for being my friend. <laughs> and then And won't you do you hunt to child in shame? We shame. Thank you for being my friend. It smell like breath mints and cinnamons. <laughs> You got to watch out for them older brothers because they're going to buy some cologne that smells like some toilet water. <laughs> that's a baby. What's it? What, what is it? Like, oof. Oof. Oh, that's how you feel. That's how you like it, huh? Mm -hmm. That's how you like it. Huh? Oh, 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 that's what you, you, you uh huh. You think that I'm hot? It's not, no, no, I don't think that you're hot. You just smell hot. That's what happens. You smell hot. That's what. Smell hot. <laughs> you smell like some Lysol. When somebody come from jail, they don't even know about the newest sense. They're up in your bathroom up there spraying Lysol on them. <laughs> They're up in the club smelling like Lysol. <laughs> oh, 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 Jesus. They're up in the club smelling like Lysol. They're dancing to Tulsa. Come on, man. Everybody moving away, Tulsa. See, y'all hating on me. Y'all don't understand what y'all rocking with. Bro, it smell like Lysol. It smell like Lysol. Picker upper. Now look what happened here. Jesus calls his disciples and said, I need to talk to you about this. He said, this woman has cast more money in than all of them which have cast into the treasury. He deemed her seed the most. You know why? Because her seed was creative seed. Her seed was she thought that King Jesus was more valuable than anything she could buy with that money. Now, now watch this here. I'm going to shock you. Something that you probably never heard and thought about with this woman was this. That she tried her best to purchase Supernatural time with Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now, I, can, I couldn't even preach this according to the natural. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. This is the type of stuff you got to preach according to the spirit. She felt that if I do what you like, I could have the favor that I like with you. If I do what you like, I could wear the anointing that I want to wear from you. I could get the recovery that I need to be rep repositioned into my royal place. Because since this woman not in a royal place according to her possessions. But she in a royal place according to her heart. Her heart is thinking about how she could purpose and give. She's purposing in her heart to give. So her heart is in the right place. Her finances is not. But because she's letting her heart direct her fight, she's letting that heart of purity rather, because not any heart, the heart of worship, the heart that has purpose to give, she's letting that rule. So now she's able to draw in another level of finances, the finances that match her sewing. Says, what you think happened to this woman? In verse 44, it says, for 
All they did was cast in from their abundance. But she, out of her want, began to cast in all that she had, even all of her living. See, saints, this woman had money moving on her mind. She had money moving on her mind. So, 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 what you want to catch about this, this woman had made up in her mind, I'm not going to let this money stay here and me try to save my life. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to activate the life that I'm really supposed to have. I'm not going to try to make this happen according to my own time and my own plan and my own. No, no. I'm just going to yield to the kingdom system and let the kingdom bring me into all other things added. This woman is operating in a sewing mantle that gets Jesus to gossip about her. Now, saints. Imagine, Jesus calls the disciples, so no, no longer is this a secretive thing. When he called the disciples, guess what? Now Jesus can't hide because he don't let them in on the business. The disciples didn't know that this woman had sold the best. So now he got to reward this woman somehow. Look at this here. The minute he talks to the disciples, now even they know that he got to give her a harvest. Because if he don't give her a harvest, then they can look at their own life and say, King Jesus, I ain't sowing into you no more because I know that you, you ain't going to respond to me or nothing like that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Now, his credibility, he put his own credibility on the line. See, King Jesus already know what he going to do for you so, so much. That he will instigate and make you focus on the fact that he's indebted to you to do something marvelous. That's how much he confident, he cocky about what he could do to provide for you. I'm not saying that he cocky in the sense of how you know it, uh, of somebody being cocky that they wrong people. No, no, no. He's cocky in being sure of his love. He know that his response to you is set because he already made up his mind to love you a long time ago. He just needed to teach you how to receive the love. You don't sow for God to love you. You sow so that you can get in position of where his love is flowing. Did you just catch what I said? You don't sow for God to love you. You sow to get in position where the love is manifesting. Because when you become love and you start sowing, now God can really start sowing into you the way that he wanted to. Saints, guess what? You probably got a couple abilities inside of you, right? Guess what? Some of your abilities, they, they, they come after you start sowing and God starts sowing more abilities into you. Remember, the man had five talents. He didn't have all the talents. But when he sows, he gets five more. So there's different abilities that is being imparted to him. That's why he's able to make money. Because there's something that has been supernaturally transferred to him. So sowing actually increases your supernaturality. The more you sow, the more you become a woman or a man that can do more things than others. You, you carry more gifts, more abilities, more wisdom, more knowledge, more functionalities, more angelic ministry. Sowing increases your divinity, your godliness. See, the seed just don't bring you into the blessing of riches that are that is overflow of money, but it brings you into the blessing of abilities. Oh, Jesus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you was just somebody that could pray and preach, now you'll have miracle working power. Why? Because you have more abilities. If you were somebody that just do miracles and, and you preach and teach, but now you could prophesy. If you was a woman that knew how to cook some good stuff, now you was a woman that got some other abilities. 
all the latest moves. All the latest moves. I said all the latest moves. If you was a man, you knew how to lift weights real good. You just chucking them. Just chucking them. Just get it. Ah, just get it up there. The chucking them. Just chuck it. And you up there, you know, men with strong upper body, they don't want to work out their legs. That'd be the discrepancy. Their legs be smaller than your legs. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Their legs be smaller than yours. Blessed be God. They up there, they, they want to up there, lift up top. They don't want to do the legs. Their legs be smaller than yours, praise God. They be up there wearing your tight tights to the gym. You're like, where's my tight tights at? Oh my goodness, where they at? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, where my tight tights at? He come home and tell some, oh baby, I'm about to go see. I'm about to take a quick nap right now. You you, you got my tight tights? Yeah, yeah, I just, went, I just went to the gym. I just went to the gym just now. You got some water for me? No, no, I don't even want to talk to you because you got yeah. Let me just see the tight tights. Let me see the tight tights. They lift up top, they all lift down low. But see, man, I remember playing football. We had to do both. Man, I had weights on my legs. I had weights on my legs. You had you, you had to um we had to do arm day, we had to do all that stuff. One time I was lifting weights. That's how I knew I had the strength of Samson. I was lifting weights with somebody that came from jail and he was this big old guy. I mean big. You know that the people that lift them 300 pounds and stuff? Like he was really Hulkamania. And me and him was lifting weights. Now this is a true story. And he went go lift some weights that he couldn't lift up. And so I went go help him, right? And then I said, I, 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 I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to lift him up. And maybe me and you just practice around. Now, this was actually my weight machine. But he couldn't lift the weight. So I, 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 took, I took the weight, right? And he thought he was going to have to spot me. At first, he tried to stop me. He was like, no, no, no. Don't lift that. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. You, you, you. And he, you know, he was from jail. So he said, you a young buck. He said, he said, he said, you a young buck. I was like, oh, young what? Nah, I'm not, I'm, you, you can't buck me, man. You can't buck me. That's, that's not how we rock it. This is not the prison, Damon. All right. This, <coughs> this is not the prison, Damon. This, this, this is not what we about here, sir. We, I'm not a young buck or man, none of that. There's not going to be no bucking, no buckaroo going on. <laughs> There's not going to be no Tampa Bay Buccaneers or man, none of it. And at that time, I was in Tampa, Florida, so Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there, there was a buck, there's a Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that was the name of the team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think that they still named Buccaneers, I think they still bucking. Now, <laughs> so, 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 he was like, he was like, he was like, nah, young buck, I'm not talking about that. He said, well, I say young buck. What I really mean is that you young. So I went to go lift up the weights and he was shocked. When I got the weights, I lift him up and I got him all up in the air. Then I put him down. I got him all the way up in the air. I put him down. I didn't need his help. So then he was trying to make excuses to us. Man, I just let you, I let you lift him up, man. I just, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I just did. I'm just chilling right now. But in the back of my mind, I knew. That that upper body was deceptive. Saying strength is more mental than physical. And spiritual strength is way more powerful than um, uh, natural strength. Spiritual strength is more powerful than natural strength. And if I could just say this to you, that even sex was supposed to be spiritual. Um, it was the worst thing that it has become fleshly. It, it wasn't ever supposed to be fleshly. Because when you're in the spirit, you actually can do more supernatural things. Remember, God is a spirit. So everything that came out of him came from spirit. So if you lower it and bring it into flesh, into natural, you know, naturality, you have stopped 
why he let it come from him. You see, well, let me pick another word. Why he let it, <laughs> why he let it arrive from him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why he let it arrive from him. I'm not going to argue with you. No, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Thank you. I'm not going to argue with you. I, I, no, I'm not going to argue with you. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking. Mark chapter 14. Look what it say right here. Verse 2. Verse 3. And being in Bethany, the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box. Now, something that I want you to catch is that he's in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. Now watch this. Simon is a leper, but he does not get healed by Jesus. Why? Because he got dishonor. He got leprosy all over his skin. And he stays in that condition. Right there, why Jesus, right there, Jesus was cleansing lepers. Look at this. And there was a woman having an alabaster box. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. Now, saints, watch this here. I want you to catch this and always remember this for the rest of your life. When you are a sower, you're anointing Jesus, you're empowering him, you're blessing him. See, the reason why Jesus blessed you and make you rich, because you blessed him and made him rich. Oh, my gosh. That's the secret about seed time and harvest and sowing and reaping is that God going to let you invest in his life that he going to show you I can do way better than you. Even though you gave me your best, I'm going to show you what, what, what I could do. And that's why you become richer and richer and richer and richer and richer because he just responding to you blessing him and taking care of him. See, this woman, she broke the box. So that box was a virgin. She had to break that box because that box was carrying the anointing of seed time. See, that, that, that box was a virgin. She had to break that box and let it become intimate with the soil that it was supposed to go into. My gosh. Money! To me now. Pull, pull, pull it. Pull it. It's powerful. Lema soto correnda de vosa. Rande besete corra pa carata. Now look at this here. It says that as King Jesus sat at meat, there came a woman. So I want you to catch this. Jesus is packaging meat. So, so he, he's a meat giver. Oh, Jesus. So, so, so King Jesus know how to feed meat, know how to release the meat of the word. Huh? And watch this. She comes when the meat is out. Now, look, the meat was out. 
which signifies that the depth of God is flowing. <laughs> the depth of God is flowing. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. The depth of God is flowing, and looks what look what takes place. Now, this woman is coming into a dimension where God is ready to bring her into the depths of who he is. So watch this here. The meat signifies that this is her about to go into the glory realm. But look, before she could enter or access the glory, look, she has to sow like she lost her mind. So the seed has to connect with the meat because now this woman about to become solid in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. She about to become solid in the spirit. She, she about to become solid in wealth, solid in increase, solid in finances, solid in provision, solid in wisdom, solid in her worship, solid. So, so watch this. She made sure that she came. She was led by the Holy Ghost because she came when the meat was out because that's what's being served to her now. The meat realm of God. God ready for her to become fat in the Holy Spirit. Because when your soul becomes fat, that means that even the yoke that Satan bit around the soul can't even fit your soul no longer because you done gained too much weight. So when Satan try to entangle you again with the yoke of bondage, he can't do it because you're too fat. Saints, I come to tell you that some of you are the reason why you'll ever even fall back into sin. It's not because you've been eating good. It's because you're malnourished. And when you get skinny, that yoke can still fit you. But when you're too fat, it can't touch you because you done got too big. It don't matter what Satan put on you. The Holy Ghost will keep you strong. He'll keep on releasing you into higher power. Why? Because when you get fat, that yoke can't fit you no more. When you get fat, that demon can't have his hold on you no more. When you get fat, you too powerful. You too anointed. You got too much grace on you. Too much glory on you. Too much power on you. Too much wealth on you. Too much fire on you. It doesn't matter what Satan want to do to you. If you just eat real good and let God give you the meal. If you let God reveal the doctrine. Ain't no doctrine of devils could stop you from being free. Ain't no doctrine of devils can stop you from being blessed. There is a river, this river flowing from Jehovah Jireh. He'll take you into the next glory. He'll take you into the next power. Somebody shout. How? Saints, you better watch this replay. This, re this replay powerful. This replay powerful. My car,